Daily Bible Time. Good morning, Thursday morning, running a little late this morning. I apologise for that. We're looking forward to Christmas Eve, 9pm tomorrow, Friday night at Village Church. And 9.30 Christmas Day, I'm opening up Matthew chapter 1, uh, Boxing Day, Matthew chapter 2. And apart from one or two Sundays, it's Matthew's Gospel right through to Easter as we do the heart of the matter, the Sermon on the Mount in Term 1 next year. Now, today, Daily Bible Time and 1 Corinthians 13 and unpacking some more about the nature of love, the character of love, the description of love that Paul gives in this chapter. He says, verse five, love does not act improperly. Love is not rude. Now, we're in 1 Corinthians 13, verse five, but back in 1 Corinthians 7, 36, a man would be acting improperly, rudely, if he provoked a young woman's affections and then refused to marry. Or in chapter 11, that was a, a man in the Corinthian church, or in chapter 11, some of the women bring shame on their heads by the way they dress. Also in chapter 11, Paul accuses the rich who don't wait for the poor of shaming those who have nothing. And love is not shameful. Love is not rude. Now, next one, love is not selfish. Love is not self-seeking. And yet, in chapter 10, Paul explicitly accuses um, the Corinthians, well, actually not accuses, urges the Corinthians not to seek their own good, uh, but rather the good of others. Um, that is uh, chapter 10, 22, chapter 10, 24, chapter 10, 33. And the issue at stake in that debate back in chapter 10 is whether or not to eat certain foods. And Paul in the discussion says, don't get caught up on what's legal to eat. The issue, issue is that you shouldn't be self-seeking but rather actively serve the others. And the Corinthians had been behaving in a self-seeking way. Next one, love is not provoked. Love is um, not, um, well, blistering temper, hardly hidden beneath the surface of a respectable facade, just waiting for an offence and then to blow up and explode. And, and some of us have marriages like that. Some of us are in relationships like that where we're far too easily provoked. Next one, love does not keep a record of wrongs, a private file of grievances. Um, uh, I don't know, there's a, a fake self-righteousness at that point, feigning a moral indignation, but secretly reveling in the, uh, in the moment. Not, don't be like that. Don't be keeping a record of, of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness. Love finds no joy in evil. Now that's a challenge. For in chapter 5, verse 1, uh, Paul writes, it's actually reported that the sexual immorality among you and of a kind that does not even occur among pagans. A man has his father's wife and you're proud. The Corinthians are proud of a church member who does the disgraceful thing of having sex with his mother-in-law. But, 1 Corinthians 13, 6, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. So, if we want to be loving people, we want to be people who look for good. Um, if there's a report of something, um, uh, doing the right thing, uh, preaching the truth, I want to rejoice over that. Love bears all things. It believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. When you read 1 Corinthians 13, in the context of the rest of 1 Corinthians, you actually discover what an intensely strong rebuke this passage is. Paul is saying love is like that, but he's saying love is not like you, Corinthians. Love is the exact opposite, the exact antithesis of you, Corinthians. This is not a honey mushy passage, 1 Corinthians 13. This is a cut you to the heart rebuke your passage. I mean, Corinthian church, they're a church with gifts to the max. But, verses 1 to 3 of 1 Corinthians 13, it's not gifts that matter, it's love that's essential. And verses 4 to 6 in 1 Corinthians 13, in defining love, Paul makes clear to the Corinthians that love is what you don't have. If we're not to be like the Corinthians, then we need to be deeply characterised by an other person-centred love be more than nothing we need to imbue this other person centered this good of the other love now we'll talk more about this tomorrow and think particularly about how this applies to the lord jesus thanks for joining us on daily bible time today god bless